Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today we're going to be continuing our Tkinter Python series by learning the scale widget. Now, the scale widget allows you to create a sort of value or integer slider. So, to create that, we're going to use the scale class from Tkinter. And our first argument is going to be from. Now, scale values range from a certain value to another value. So, to specify the beginning value, we're going to say from underscore. Now notice that we can't just use from because that keyword is reserved for imports in modules. Two at 150 means that the max value of the scale will be 150. When we say length is 400, we're saying that is the pixel length of the slider. And resolution shows us that every tick of the slider sliding will increase the value by two. Orient can be horizontal or vertical and that simply specifies the orientation of the slider. We're gonna pack this together and run the program, and you're gonna notice that we get this sort of slider scale widget that goes from zero to 150 and increments by values of two. If we change the two value to 300, we can see that the max value achievable now is 300. Let's go ahead and change that back to 150. Now, if we make the length something like 40 or very small, you can see that it shrinks the scale widget to a very small size. Let's put that back to 400 so that we have a little bit more visibility on our widget. Now, another cool thing about the scale is you can actually tie a command that runs as a function whenever you change the value of the scale. So we're gonna make this something simple and simply print the value that the slider is on. Now, the command automatically takes a default argument, which is val, and val is simply that number that, it's, that the scale is on. So here you can see that whatever value we're producing on the scale widget is actually being printed out to the command line. Now, we don't really want to have functions for very simple tasks like printing the value, so Let's go ahead and make this an anonymous function or a lambda function and just allow it to print that one value from the slider out to the command line. This cleans up our code a little bit and allows us to accomplish the same task that we initially had with a little more lines of code. So now that we have a basic understanding of how the scale widget works, let's actually make a little calculator program using two slider widgets. For this program, we're just gonna be copying and pasting the code we have from slider one. It's gonna be two identical sliders, so there's no need to actually write out the code for this. Let's go ahead and change the resolution to one, copy that down, and use a similar pack method to produce two sliders. Now, if we run this, we see that we have two identical sliders and the resolution is one on both of them because we want to have precise values when we're performing these calculations. So this mini calculator will take two numbers, one from each slider, and perform some very basic math operations on those two numbers. We're going to add them, subtract them, multiply, and divide. So the way we want this program to work, let's have a calculate button. So we want the sliders to slide to whatever value we want. And whenever we hit the calculate button, we want those operations to be performed. So we're going to use the button widget from Tkinter. The text on it is going to be calculate. And when we click it, we're going to have a function called calculate values, which is going to perform all these operations and print the results out on the command line. So let's define this function at the top and say def calculate values and it takes no parameters as inputs and returns nothing because we're only printing out to the command line. This function works by actually getting the values from the sliders and then simply printing the results in a formatted string. To grab the values from the sliders, we simply use the dot get method. So we have two values, val1 and val2, and val1 is the first slider's value, and val2 is the second's. 
Now we want to print the numbers that we actually retrieved from the sliders. So we're going to say that the first number is a curly bracket. Now curly brackets, if you don't know how print format works, these curly brackets can be replaced by numbers at the end of the string by simply using the format method. So every time you see a curly bracket, that is simply a value that's going to be substituted in at the end. So we're going to display the first number and the second number. We're going to display the sum, the difference, the product, and the quotient. So this function needs six values to be replaced at the end. So when we call dot format, the first bracket corresponds to value 1, the second bracket is value 2, the third bracket, which is the sum bracket, is value 1 plus value 2. And let's move that down just to make it a little bit better visually looking. The fourth bracket is value 1 minus value 2. The fifth bracket is value 1 times value 2. And the sixth bracket is value 1 divided by value 2. So now once we run this, we can slide these widgets around. And when we actually click calculate on our command line, we're going to see that the actual arithmetic operations were performed and the output is formatted using the format method. However, we see that if we try to, do, if we try to make the second slider zero, we get a zero division error because obviously dividing by zero is not possible. So to correct this error, let's just make this print statement in a try block. We're going to say try the value, try to print what we just said, except in the case of a zero division error. If we have a zero division error, let's simply say print, you can't divide by zero. This prevents our program from spitting out any nasty values and gives the user a little bit more guidance in how to use the program. So now you can see once we divide by zero, we get that good error message popping up. And if we multiply by zero, we see that the product is zero. Zero divided by zero is impossible, so we get the appropriate error message. I hope this video was helpful in teaching you how to use the scale widget. Be sure to stay tuned for more videos in our T-Kinter series, and thank you all so much for watching.